Enigmatic E. Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about Toon Crafter. It came out a few days ago, but the way AI moves, you might as well say it came out six months ago and or a year ago, but uh, no, nah, it came out a few days ago and basically what it does, it grabs key frames like you see right here. You could get like two frames, a starting frame and an ending frame, for example. Uh, when you're doing animation, you have what they call keyframes, which are the main poses and other people animate Oftentimes it's other people they animate the in-betweens and what this does it will interpolate that the two keyframes and create new frames out of the two keyframes and does the in-betweens pretty much so it adds those additional in-between frames for you So how does this work, right? Uh, I'm gonna read this so it kind of briefly explains what it's doing it says, Toon Crafter can interpolate two cartoon images by leveraging the pre-trained image to video diffusion priors. If we come here, it shows some more examples of what we just saw, showcasing 512 by 320 resolution. And you can see what it's doing right here. It gets two frames and then it animates the in-betweens and it's doing a freaking amazing job at it. And uh, you can see here too how Oh, look at, look at the freaking details on this. Look at it. It retains the details. What the heck, man? That's crazy. Here it has some examples of sketches as well, which is doing a great job with that too. Uh, here we have a disclaimer it says, calm down. <laughs> I love that. Our framework opens up the era of generative cartoon interpolation, but due to the variety of the generative video prior, the success rate is not guaranteed. This is an open source research exploration instead of commercial products. And I guess this needs to be emphasized. It can't meet all your expectations. So don't expect to be creating some kind of full on anime with this because it's not there yet. And that's just a reality. And honestly, like people who see this and say like critique it and say, ah, oh, this looks like trash or whatever. Like I, I, I would think that by now people understand that wherever the state AI is at the moment, it's not going to stay there. It's not going to look like this forever. Like, I don't get that. Some people just like critique things and just say, this looks like trash. It's doesn't look good. Do you not remember what AI videos looked like a year ago or a year and a half ago or how AI art looked a year ago? Do you not like remember that? So that's kind of weird for me when people critique stuff like that. But to me, like there's so many things that just look insanely good already as it is. And if this is going to improve, it's going to be kind of crazy. So here's an article by Arogid, I believe it's pronounced. And they're talking about the people that are behind this. And here it says a group of Chinese researchers from the University of Hong Kong, the City University of Hong Kong and, and Tencent AI lab spoke about the creation of TuneCrafter Neural Network. The model can be useful for studios creating anime style videos. TuneCrafter is based on the dynamic crafter model tailored for generating videos. It was additionally trained on dataset from anime. Hmm. It would not be possible to generate a long scene this way, but TuneCrafter copes better with short animations than its competitors, at least based on the example selected by the creators on the neural network. In addition to generating color animation, TuneCrafter has several other interesting features. Firstly, the neural network can generate black and white animations based on sketches. Secondly, TuneCrafter is capable of coloring animated sketches based on a single provided reference. So basically, if you draw sketches, you can get one reference image with color on it, and then it will do the rest for you. That is wild. It is noteworthy that in this TuneCrafter mode, you can give more than one color reference. This allows you to more precisely control the coloring of the scene. You can experiment with TuneCrafter demo on Hug and Face, all right? So I'm gonna show you in a bit where you can experiment with that. But I do wanna highlight something from this TuneCrafter page. If you come here to limitations, and I love that they did this. It's something that we say a lot in the AI world when it comes to video is like, this is great, but it's not perfect. And in this case, it's not perfect. and that's okay, right? Because things will get better with time and it will get better. So right here says limitations. Our second model may not correctly and semantically understand the image contents. Example, the black part should be the rigid body of the aircraft, which cannot sway with the wind. And as you can see here, there's uh, two images here and this thing is wobbling all crazy like a flag or something. I think it's just because it doesn't have any other context. There's nothing to tell it, hey, this is supposed to be rigid. and all it sees is this little curve right here and then it says well maybe it's something that needs to be that's kind of like a like a fabric or something that's blowing in the wind right yeah i can understand why it doesn't do well with that 
And here we have another example. It says, our model may struggle to generate convincing transition motions when objects appear or disappear in the frame. So in these two frames, we see in the starting frame, this guy with the top hat, he's walking out of the scene, and this guy with the mustache is walking into the scene. And this is what it's doing. It's kind of morphing this guy with the top hat into this other guy. Yeah, it's just not doing a good job with that. So uh, another thing that's uh, understandable, but again, hopefully that can improve with time and I'm pretty sure it will. And so we have some more examples here. We got this one of uh, this girl and it looks decent. The hands look okay. Then the chopsticks here or the whatever utensil this is starts to become like noodles <laughs> like right here. And uh, yeah, it kind of warps and obviously the resolution is not very high. It does very well in some areas like we see here, like this is so good right here. Like the starting frame is like a side view and then a front view and then the mouth moving. This is what it does really well when it does stuff like that. Like something like this is just insane. It, the eyes are closed, they open, the mouth moves. Um, here we have examples of the sketch animation and the references. And then it's doing this, it's coloring it in pretty much. And that is insane. Like that means it will make the process so much faster when creating animations or animes and stuff like that. Yeah, it's very, very impressive where it's at. Obviously, it's going to improve as we speak right now. There are probably and there. I know for a fact, actually, that there are people working to make this even better, to make it work a lot smoother, to have it glitch out less. Yeah, and probably a month or two months and who knows uh, or weeks we know we don't know uh, I might be making an update to this video where I'm talking about how it's improved drastically um, but yeah all this is very very impressive I got to play around with it there are two ways that I know at least uh, how to work with this and you can go to the hug and face demo where you come in here you put two images let's go ahead and try that uh, one of Goku with his mouth open and then one of Goku with his mouth closed. I'm going to leave the default settings. Maybe I just put here anime and maybe talking. I, I'm not sure if that's going to help it a lot, but I think I don't even need to put that to be honest. I'm just going to go ahead and put it in and then it's going to kind of go into a queue and then I'm going to be waiting till it finishes. And you can also try this in Comfy UI thanks to Kajai. This person developed a way for you to do it inside of Comfy. And uh, if you come to this page, I'm gonna put a link in the description where you can download the workflow. And if you're not familiar with Comfy UI, I have a video about it. There should be a link above where you can check out how to install it onto a PC. And then that will help you get started and understand how it works. If you come here to examples, you can download the Toon Crafter example right here. They put one for low revamp. And uh, so you can play around with these, uh, try these and see which one um, works the best for you. So here we have the video and when I play it, you see that it's doing an amazing job at mouth movements and it's even moving the clouds in the background. That is very cool. And it doesn't like it almost always works when you do something like this, at least with my testing. It uh, does very well with mouth movements. It does well with blinking. So I try it here in Comfy UI and it gives me pretty much the same exact results. Here's another example that I did. And uh, this time it has it kind of going up and down as he's moving his mouth. And I also know that if you play around with the seed, it will give you different results. Sometimes it will improve the animation. So here is the first attempt I did. This is the second attempt. Uh, the only changes that I made was I added a, I just kind of randomized the seed and then also I played around with this number right here. I believe this is frames per second because if I come up here to the settings here, it has frames per second and it has 10. Um, and so I put hit 10 here and I think that's what it is. So when I did that, it did give me slightly different results. As you can see, this one is not moving up and down as much as this one. Yeah, and that's what I heard. I heard some people say that when you bring this FS down, it will create more motion. And you can see that here for sure. To me, this just looks a little bit smoother when, especially the mouth movement right here than this. So you can go ahead and play with those numbers like the FS, play around with different seeds and also your width and height. 
that will affect your VRAM. So just be aware, try to keep things low. Kijai does give some recommendations when it comes to that. Here are some recommendations for specific models. And it, it tells you that the resolution, like uh, 320 by 512, it tells you how much it uses, pretty much GPU memory it uses and how long it takes pretty much. You can check these out. When you download this workflow, just make sure you, you go to manager, you update all, make sure everything's updated. And then when you have this node here, when you select one, it's going to download that specific model and then you don't have to worry about finding it. You can also add some more images if you want. Um, it does really well from frame one to two, but when you add three, it kind of like stops suddenly and then suddenly goes kind of crazy. But I'm not sure if it's just my testing or if it that's just a general thing that it does, but you can test it out for yourself. Um, so you can always add right here uh, inputs. So just put the number and update input and just, uh, yeah, just copy these and then put them into here and you should have more frames to go by. So you can play around with this and I will put the link, like I said, to Kajai's uh, GitHub so you can download this workflow. So I wanna share some stuff from other creators. And here we have McMumpets and he is showing how he's using real life images to create this scene that looks kind of like anime. And he's saying that he has a bunch of ideas on how to improve this. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what he comes up with. But I think it's really interesting that you don't even need animated images you can literally just use real life images which is going to make things so much easier if you don't actually have to draw it in the first place so that is kind of crazy so shout out to mcmumpets uh, he also has a youtube channel where he does tutorials as well with comfy ui and 3d and a bunch of stuff so go check him out here's another example from ai warper he is using six input frames with this and then you see this full animation of what is it gogeta going super saiyan blue i believe um again it looks kind of funky at times, but still from six frames to do all this is kind of crazy, right? I love this one right here where it does four frames and you see this full on, it's over 9,000 animation of Vegeta. And uh, this is, this is wow. It's over 9,000. <laughs> that is crazy. And this one is crazy too from Justine Moore. Look at this one right here. Yeah, there's a lot of examples out there. If if you have some cool ones, send them my way. My Twitter at is 8bit underscore E. Unfortunately, Enigmatic E was taken, so I had to go with this. Definitely at me if you have some crazy results. I would like to see what people are coming up with. As this improves, what it basically will accomplish, it will make the animation process and like production way less tedious. Things will be way faster. Coloring is gonna be faster. And I really hope that studios embrace this and I'm sure I'm pretty confident that they are going to, or at least they're already probably looking into this or are already very, very much in the process of implementing it into their production. I just feel like, how could you not like this will speed up the process for show so much more and tell the story that they want to tell. And I'm sure some people are going to have issues with this technology, but you know, you can't really do anything about it except trying to learn it and try to create stuff yourself. So, yeah. All right, everyone. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for the support. I know I haven't been uploading a lot lately, but I want to make more videos. I, I plan on uploading more frequently. Maybe not always tutorials, but maybe uh, talking about AI topics, new things that come out or just anything, you know. So thank you so much for your support. Please like, comment, subscribe if you have not already and I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Peace.